after the Democrats lost their House majority in the midterms, longtime party leader Nancy Pelosi announced her decision to step down as Democratic leader. Normally, her job might fall to her second in command, Steny Hoyer, but he's white and male, cis and straight, a horrible combination to have for a Democrat these days. But fortunately, like Pelosi, he's very old. So Hoyer can be pushed into retirement without things seeming too suspicious. So instead of Hoyer, the new House Minority Leader is going to be Representative Hawking Jeffries of New York, now entering his sixth term in the House. Did you know that Jeffries is the first ever Black Party leader in Congress? You likely do, because corporate media outlets and Democrats, excuse the redundancy, can't stop talking about it. From Reuters, House Democrats elect Hakeem Jeffries as the first Black Party leader. ABC News, Hakeem Jeffries makes history as the first Black Party leader in Congress. CNN, House Democrats pick Hakeem Jeffries, the first Black lawmaker, to lead a party in Congress. NBC News, House Democrats elect Representative Hakeem Jeffries as leader, the first black person to be to lead a congressional caucus. You get the idea. Now, take a step back. Do any of these headlines tell you any relevant information about Jeffries at all? About his policy views, about his ideology, which factions or interests he serves? Do these headlines tell you anything about how he would perform? Which members of Congress still with a straight face call public service? How does it affect your life that Jeffries is of a different race than Nancy Pelosi? The answer, of course, is it doesn't. In fact, even examining this from the superficial, superficial prism of democratic diversity, how is this even an interesting achievement? Americans already elected a black president. Then we reelected him just to prove it wasn't a fluke. Two years ago, we elected an ever-evolving vice president a woman who is either black or Indian or both, depending on which is most politically useful in the moment. But we don't need to restrict ourselves to recent history. Almost 100 years ago, America elected Charles Curtis as its vice president. Curtis was three-eighths American Indian. He was the descendant of two chiefs of the Kaw Nation and the Asagi Nation. He spent his earliest years on a reservation raised by his Native American grandparents. Despite that, he climbed to the very top of the American political system at a time when Jim Crow was at its peak. He's way more impressive from a diversity perspective than Kamala Harris or Barack Obama. The fact that nobody has heard of him says a lot. Given all that, Having a black house leader isn't close to an amazing breakthrough. It's exactly what it should be, a non-event. We care about what Jeffries will do, not what he looks like. The coverage focusing on Jeffries' race isn't just non-news, it's anti-news. It's vacuous pablum pushed out in the place of telling you anything that is actually relevant. What does Jeffries as a Democratic leader mean politically? Is he a moderate or a radical? What's his relationship to the squad, the AOC-led faction that represents the self-described socialist left? Will Jeffrey copy Pelosi's style or have a different one? Will he continue to serve high-money corporate donors who have driven the Democratic Party since at least the Clinton years? Will he try to exert more oversight authority over the U.S. security state, Wall Street, and big tech? Or will he continue to have Democrats view those institutions as crucial allies. Will he try to compromise with the GOP majority? Or will he assume a hostile posture toward new Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy? These are the questions that matter for you and for the country. And the identity politics parties thrown by Democrats and their media outlets, outlets by design get you to focus on everything but those questions. Of course, there's a big reason you aren't getting this information. First black whatever is a ceremonial title. Strip it away and you'll find a swamp creature. Hakeem Jeffries is one of the purest embodiments of the sleazy, grimy, corporate K-street politics that pervades D.C. That's who he is and always has been. It's the reason he rose to the top of the Democratic House caucus. Out of 282 Democrats who served in the last Congress, Jeffries received the second most campaign contributions from lobbyists. And of the $5.6 million Jeffries raised this past two-year cycle, only about 4.8%, 4.8% of that came from small donors, meaning people giving less than $200. For comparison, for Bernie Sanders, the figure is 70%. For Marjorie Taylor Greene, it's about 69%.
Now, let's consider that CNN article we just mentioned, the one gushing about Jeffries as the first black congressional leader. The article calls him a, quote, generational change from the current set of House leaders. That's true in exactly one sense. Jeffries is literally chronologically younger than Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer. Great, amazing, who cares? Usually when you hear about generational change, it's supposed to signify a shift in priorities or values. Like that old Bob Dylan song, The Times They Are A-Changing. But with Jeffries, nothing will be a-changing. One phrase you won't hear in CNN's little write-up is Team Blue. Team Blue. That's the pack which Jeffries co-founded this last cycle with two other House Democrats. Team Blue's explicit purpose is shutting down progressive primary challengers to Democratic incumbents. Team Blue's creation was directly inspired by the successful primary challenges of AOC and her fellow New York squad member Jamal Bowman. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that makes sense. Progressive activists might nominate somebody too extreme in a purple district and cause Democrats to lose an otherwise winnable race. But no, that's not what Jeffries is doing. He created Act Blue after Jamal Bowman unseated his friend Elliot Engel, a 31-year incumbent who voted for the Iraq War and one of, was one of APAC's most steadfast loyalists. Jeffries was one of Hillary Clinton's most vocal surrogates in 2016 and one of Bernie Sanders' most vicious critics. The people that Team Blue endorsed, names like Chantel Brown over Nina Turner, Danny Davis, Carolyn, Carolyn Maloney, and Don, Donald, Don, Donald Payne Jr., all of these representatives are in ultra-blue districts, places that voted for Joe Biden by 50 or more percentage points, where the odds of a Republican victory weren't low, they were zero. Team Blue's agenda wasn't about protecting a Democratic majority. It was simply about keeping pro-corporate Democrats from getting dislodged by self-described progressive populists such as AOC. Now, this rivalry between Jeffries and the squad was supposed to go both ways. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update. Catch our full shows for free live weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Rumble and join our Locals community at greenwall.locals.com for all of my written journalism, exclusive after-show Q&As, and more.